Good morning everyone, it's CPC module 2 test day today. Had a bit of a bad night last night, it was the missus's birthday. So I had a couple of cheeky drinks, which has led to a really cheeky headache. Feels like someone's been playing the drums on my head all night. But I'm here, I'm on time, I'm at Bolton Lads and Girls Club again. No on site parking, remember that if you come to this test centre. I'm not looking forward to this test, I think it's going to be really difficult. I hope I pass. I've not failed any test up to now. I've done a hell of a lot of revision for this. I've gone through a full 580 page case study test book. If you want any details on that, just let me know. If there's anything you want me to go over, any questions, any case studies, if there's anything you're unsure about, ask me. If I pass today, I'm going to show you a couple of tips what I've used to try and like remember certain abbreviations, for example. Um, a couple of easier ways of remembering certain whips and stuff that you need to obviously remember. That is if I pass. I don't think this is going to be easy at all. But I've done my best. I've revised literally as much as I can. My test is in three minutes, so I'm going to get down to the test centre now and I will see you in a transition. Hello everybody, I'm back and I've passed. Forty-seven out of fifty. Uh, three questions I got wrong. Social environment of road transport. I got two incorrect answers on that. Carriage of goods. I got one incorrect answer on that. I wish it'd tell you what you actually got wrong, but it doesn't. Um, the questions quite tricky. Some of them. A lot of stuff that I've revised wasn't actually on that test. I didn't get any questions on. I didn't get any questions on like the width of vehicles didn't get any questions about the weights of vehicles I got four questions that was like maths questions one of them was something like Scott has an 18 ton tipper wagon but he's got a C plus E license and he's upgrading to a 44 ton articulated wagon his first wagon has a payload of 11 ton and his articulated wagon is going to have a payload of 26.5 ton. What was it? When his tipper is fully loaded? No. How many trips will he have to make? No. To cover the weight of the Arctic or something along them lines. It was basically asking, how many loads could you fit in the Arctic? No. God. One of the questions I got was, for example, because I can't remember it word for word, Scott has um, a four axle tipper truck at the moment. His payload is 26.5 tonnes. He's changing it for a 44 tonne maximum authorised mass Arctic um, with a, a curbside weight of 13 tonnes. How many loads can he fit in the Arctic? No. How many trips does he have to make in the tipper to cover one journey in the Arctic? It was something like that. And the answer was two. I think, I think anyway, that's what I put, I put to. Um, I got a question on how often do you have to maintain the fifth wheel? I didn't actually know that. Uh, I got the alcohol question. How long does alcohol stay in your bloodstream for? Uh, what's the consequences of drinking before the night before you drive? What do you do if you start to feel tired behind the wheel? I got double manning questions. How long? Can you drive when you're double manning? What do you do when the other person's driving? What do you have your tackle set to? Brake, other work, driving, etc. I got one question about first aid. Who provides first aid training? There was the Blue Cross, the Red Cross Society, the DVSA, and somebody else. And I think I put the Red Cross Society. I didn't have a clue. How am I supposed to know that? I don't know. I've done 580 pages of revision and I didn't know that. Didn't say that anywhere. Um, another crazy question that I got that didn't make sense to me was Brian's been on an advanced driving course. He hit a railway bridge. Don't know why he'd put that in the same sentence, but it did. He has set his cruise control limiter to 50 mile an hour rather than 55 to save fuel. What effect does the device have on his wagon? The answers were less wear and tear on the gears, 
um, greater intervals between servicing, increased drag and something else. And I looked at it and I thought, increased fuel consumption means that it's less eco-friendly, so it's not going to be that one. Reduced wear and tear on the gears, could it be that? I don't know. I mean, I would drive in a little bit slower, reduce wear and tear on your gears. Would it? I don't know. Uh, greater intervals between servicing, can you actually do that? I don't think you can. I didn't know. I put less wear and tear on the gears because I can't really think of it being anything else I didn't get any question on any of the abbreviations that I've been learning ATP EGR CMR JAUPT I didn't get any questions on any of that stuff I uh, didn't get any questions about vehicle whips like the 3 or 5 millimetre you need marker boards didn't get any of that stuff it weren't that, that hard it wasn't that difficult it was just uh, the way they word the questions and I think that's that was that's the main problem. The way they word the questions makes it confusing. At this part of the video, I actually said that I'm not going to give you any tips on how I remembered the abbreviations. But I thought it's a bit tight, isn't it? Because that's what I said I was going to do. So I'm about a week after my CPC now. I'm still waiting for my module four, and I'm going to give you the tips that I use now. I've got a little piece of paper here with them written down. So. Uh, J-A-U-P-T, I remembered that as personal training, the PT. They're responsible for your CPC training, which is personal, it's personal to you. So personal training, that's that one. DVSA and DVLA, I remembered the S and the L. S being standards, L being license. So your DVSA do your tests because they're a standard. That's a standard you've got to meet. The DVLA obviously does your driving license. ATP, I remember temperature. Any question regarding temperature control goods, you know, chickens, for example, fruit, etc. If it ever asks you a question regarding the moving of temperature control goods, it's always going to be ATP. Remember the T as temperature. CMR, this one, I remember the M. It's always the middle letter in these, these couple. The M stands for merchandise. Even though that's not politically correct, because I think it's involved in the international transfer of goods. I remembered the merchandise because it's not going to give you the answer CMR to anything regarding the movement of goods on just UK roads. It's always going to involve something international. So, for example, if somebody's moving furniture frames from Holland to the UK and it says, is it ATP, CMR? ADR or JAUPT, you know it's not temperature controlled, it's not dangerous, which I'm going to get into a minute in a minute. It's not personal training. It's going to be merchandise because it's it's not under any it's not under any law. It's just an item, an item of furniture. It's merchandise, it's something that you sell. ADR, I remember the D being dangerous, which means you know, gas. Um, petrol, anything dangerous, anything corrosive, acid, etc. It's the D, it's dangerous. PG9 and PG10. Uh, PG9, from what I remember, is what they give you if Vosa pull you over and you've got like a tire out or a light out. They'll give you a PG9. A PG10 is what they give you when you've rectified the error so you've got a new tire and it's been checked by a competent person will give you a pg10 i remember pg as the obvious parental guidance it's like your dad shouting at you if you remember parental guidance you're going to remember someone telling you off so if it asks such a body's been pulled over with and they've got a massive gash down the tire what is he going to be issued remember parental guidance and you'll be right you'll be on the right track so next, <clears throat> I'm just going to quickly fire out some facts about the vehicles, the, the lengths and the widths. The longest an Arctic can be is 16.5 metres, but the longest a road train can be, which is a wagon and drag, is 18.75 metres. The maximum width is actually 2.6 metres. Now this is a bit confusing because it's actually 2.55 metres, 
but if it's a refrigerated wagon or a refrigerated vehicle the maximum width is actually 500 mil wider which is strange because if a vehicle is 305 millimeters or if the load that a vehicle is carrying is 305 millimeters wider it needs marker boards but a refrigerator wagon can be 500 millimeters wider so the maximum width with the refrigerator on the back is 2.6 meters i hope you're following along there is no maximum height of a vehicle in the uk none it can be as high as it wants but if it's higher than three meters it needs to have a marker board on the inside it needs to the axle weights are also a little bit confusing because there's no pattern it'd be easier to remember if there was a pattern i tried to use the times eight pattern but it only goes up the first three the max weight of a two axle rigid is 18 tons if you add eight three axle is 26 tons if you add eight again four axle would be 34 but it's 32 again that's a little bit confusing but then five axle is 40 tons and then everyone knows the maximum weight or you should know of a six axle arctic is 44 ton that's the maximum weight unless you're working on stg or category one two or three or whatever it is i've only had questions on stg or category two i don't know how many categories there are i've not actually checked but stg or category two the maximum weight is 80 tons uh one trick question that i did get was referring to red diesel the reason why companies use red diesel simply plain and simply because it's cheap that's it no other reason you might get questions where the answers trying to trying to elaborate on something like fuel economy red diesel is better because it's more fuel economic or red diesel provides less engine wear than white diesel no the simple answer is it's cheap then with a couple of little tips that i've got i hope they do help someone i hope it makes something a little bit easier to remember thanks for watching thanks for sticking with me if you like this content please comment like and subscribe i have got a full playlist of all my hdv training and everything applications for taco cards where to get the application form from hdv assessments the medical i've got everything on my channel all in a playlist thank you very much for watching take care i've passed get in one more thing to do and then i'm out on the road thank god See ya.